So multi-physics system of computer models, uh, I categorize uh, in two uh, types, the shallow and deep. And the shallow you basically have only in two layers. And this most of the people are um, the only ways. You have two, basically uh, in the layer one, you probably have one model and layer two you have another model. But um, like in climate systems, probably you have more than two uh, physical models. So the system may uh, compromise three or four models and you may even have branches of the models that uh, uh, give the uh, output to another model in the layer two, for example. So um, to construct the emulator on such kind of system, the image sort would be uh, only use a global input and output and treat the whole system as a black box. And this way you can construct the emulator. But uh, we think it's if, if inefficient and effective because you ignore the, all the structures in the black box which you have a knowledge of. So why we don't uh, utilize this knowledge of our structures and um, construct the emulator for each of these models and try to find a way to integrate these uh, uh, emulators to get the best of the information we have. Uh, so that's the idea of the integrated emulator. And in this way, you can treat different models in different ways and you don't need to uh, uh, just uh, give, um, give a Gaussian process which you have the uh, specific uh, kernel functions. In this way, you can specify any kernel function for different models, which is very flexible. And here is just a little review of the people who use similar ideas. The, we can trace it back to the 2004. This, this paper actually is didn't directly deal with the emulation problem. It uh, is a paper that deal with the time series prediction, which uh, at each time point you treat as a Gaussian uh, distribution and you integrate the Gaussian process. And only recently there are papers that uh, deal with the integration of Gaussian process emulators, but mostly uh, shallow uh, systems and very obsessed with uh, square exponential and the RD type of the kernel function, which uh, personally I don't think it's flexible enough. So in our work, we uh, extend the kernel families, which provide uh, Board range of the kernels which provide the closed form uh, solutions for the integrated uh, emulator. And also, we're dealing with uh, uh, much more complex uh, uh, structures of the system which can be used as this technique. So, how to construct the uh, integrated emulator? Actually, uh, any system of the faith forward uh, multi physics systems can be. Uh, can be collapsed into an uh, elementary two-layered uh, system. So in order to construct the uh, system, uh, emulator of the uh, multi physics system, basically you just need to uh, uh, construct the emulator of two-layered system and iteratively uh, integrate them um, to have the final uh, emulator for the whole system. So that's, that's a very, very simple idea how to uh, construct such uh, such emulators. So, so the core would be now how to construct the emulator of the two. So basically there are a lot of works on this and we'll follow that and uh, do some uh, theoretical expansion. So we use a, a universal cracking model for the individual uh, computer models to construct the emulators. So basically this is just uh, uh, a cracking model, uh, how you uh, define them. And uh, here I, I specify the, the kernel function in a very general form. So these are one dimensional kernels to each dimensions. And the ways they are combined together, I s assume a long function. So I didn't assume it's a, it's a multiplicative form or what kind of form. It, it can be different forms. And so I assume just a function. And there are different types of uh, ways you can choose to combine the one, um, one dimensional uh, kernel functions. You can use multiplicative way. So that's uh, normally people use ARD, use this form. And also you can use additive. The reason I, I list the additive here because in some physical problems, probably in the earthquake ones, the, uh, uh, the input have the additive effects on output rather than the interactions. So it'll be interesting to add additive here. And uh, all these, um, these one-dimensional kernel functions, 
there's a popular choice, exponential square exponential is most popular, but uh, I also uh, illustrate the Martin here because in high dimension, presumably you will need uh, Martin to avoid some numerical issues. And the linear uh, kernel uh, I put here because uh, sometimes you don't want to uh, um, put your uh, input in the train, but uh, rather than to uh, model this uh, function form in the, uh, in the kernel. And also you can combine uh, these kernels to form the new kernels, uh, which because nonlinear is non-stationary, probably you can find more uh, uh, um, better kernels to, uh, to replace your uh, underlying um, physical model. Uh, so the emulator, uh, integrated emulator of a two-layered uh, multiphysics system basically have these two assum important assumptions. You assume that the output of the first models have an independent uh, uh, normal distribution. Actually, this independence can be relaxed. You don't really necessarily have independent output. You can have multivariant normal as well. Uh, it's just require more analytical work, but it's uh, doable. And the most important assumption is here, it's uh, you have the uh, uh, variance of the output that W1 to WB uh, uh, goes to zero. Uh, intuitively, it's very easy. When you have the uh, variance of the emulator, uh, W1 to WD goes to zero, then basically you integrate a constant function to a Gaussian uh, distribution, so it will be a Gaussian. So this function is used to uh, to demonstrate the approximately Gaussian here. But the mean and the variance are exact, no matter it's Gaussian or not. So, so uh, do some analytic work. Actually, you can uh, get this uh, result for the exact mean and variance for integrated the emulator. I avoid the Gaussian process emulator because as you can see from the mean and variance the formula here, it's not from a Gaussian process. So that's the reason why I just call it integrated emulator. Um, so all these are analytical and it comes down to calculate these three expectations, which depends on the, your choice of the kernel function. And for most, um, for all the uh, one dimensional kernels I illustrated in the previous uh, slides, they have the closed form solution. And here I give the very simple uh, multiplication form and the square exponential. Uh, it has the simplest uh, expression for these three uh, expectations. Um, because for the Martin uh, type, I, I can uh, compress the uh, expressions in one slide. Um, but it all works. And so basically all, all the uh, combinations on these slides have the analytical solution. Uh, you can, um, so that so it's a very broad uh, families of kernels that can be computed in a, in a second because of the analytical solution. So here I do some experiments to demonstrate the performance of the of the integrate uh, emulator. So we have a simple deep uh, structure. We have the three uh, uh, models which I know the true function forms, and the, here are the true function forms, and I choose. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, uh, seven design points. And here is a composite, which you only use a global input and output to construct emulators. And here I use uh, exactly the same design point, but uh, I uh, emulate two mo uh, three models separately and integrate them together. And you can see the, the mean is fairly well and, uh, um, and the variance is small. So. Basically, it saves you a lot of time on the designing because with identical design set, actually they achieve better performance on the emulation. And this current uh, second experiment, I want to illustrate that uh, the physics systems like this, if you use a composite, which you ignore the systems, you, you have two dimensions here. And, uh, and actually these two, uh, two functions didn't interact each other. So if you appreciate the structure here, actually you effectively uh, decrease the dimension. Uh, so here's the true function, okay? And here, the, the left side will be the composite. And you can see that in some parts, 
the composite emulator is very bad, especially on these peak areas and here on the ridge. But if you see the integrated using the same uh, designing point, which is a very good uh, emulator on this, uh, and the small variance as well. So, so that's uh, how the uh, extra information we gain that uh, provides better uh, performance for the emulator. And the third experiment I do here is to demonstrate the flexibility of the framework of the integrated emulator. Um, let's assume these three, um, three computer models uh, are expensive to run, and this is very cheap to run. So, um, so this is a true function. And if I do 10 design points, you see actually both, of, both the composite and the integrated didn't do very well, uh, mimic the, uh, the true function. The reason is because the, the second model have three dimensions. If you choose, choose 10 design point, when it propagate here, it cannot cover most of the uh, parameter space of the second model. So that's the reason why even the integrated uh, emulator cannot uh, mimic the true function. So now you would like to uh, add further design points in order to improve the emulator. But for the composite one, for example, I add uh, more design point in between. But for the composite Gaussian Plus emulator, you have to run the whole systems nine times in order to uh, retrain your emulator. But for integrated, the good thing is that you don't really need to, uh, need to run the whole system again. If you, your first uh, um, layer uh, emulators are good enough, you can just use an emulator to uh, propagate your uh, new uh, design points to here and uh, rerun the second model, which is cheap. So that will save a lot of time for um, retraining your second model. And then I just use the existing uh, emulator of first layer and the ray trend uh, emulator of second model. And you can see here, this uh, new design point and this by composite and this uh, integrated, which I only retrain a second uh, emulator. And you see it's much better in terms of the variance. Um, and they save times to achieve a, a comparable performance. So currently, we, we have seen this uh, good performance of the, uh, of the integrated emulator. But uh, the problem is that we want to understand why it performs better than the uh, composite. Because in that sense, we can find a good um, designing strategies in order to exploit the uh, performance of it. So here's, uh, I will produce this uh, popular uh, example in Jim Berg's, Jim Berg's uh, paper. So it's a simple um, channel uh, structure. And if you choose this uh, six design point, you see that the composite performs very bad and the convenience itself, it's, it's good. Um, but for the integrated, it performs good and uh, actually, uh, if you observe carefully, you can find there's some points which have a very small variance in addition to the true design point. So it seems like these points need the uh, uh, integrate emulator to find the true function form. So I, I named this as a virtual design point, but I want to find why this point appears here. So if you plot the first stage model, Here's the emulator, it's very good. I think it basically uh, collapse, basically overlap the true function. And then I draw the uh, horizontal lines and you see this, this true uh, design point actually produce some virtual design point here, which just corresponding to this point in the integrated emulator. That's creating, creating this no variance so here is a trick of the integrated emulator because it creates some virtual designing point. Of course, it depends on the quality of the emulator of the first stage model. Uh, so that's a, so I think that's a that's an important part because in order to have a good emulator 
and integrated emulator, you possibly have to uh, mimic the first stage uh, um, physical model very well. Otherwise, it will need uh, to run, uh, need to uh, bad perform the integrated emulator. Actually, do some uh, other synthetic tests to, to see these problems and. Uh, it really did sometimes is uh, if your emulator is very different from true functions, then it will create some misleading virtual design point, which is not at all on the uh, on the true functions. While you can still see this this uh, narrow variance somewhere else. So so here I uh, I said okay if the virtual it is the virtual design points that uh, help the integrated. Uh, Emulator. Then, I if, what if I put this virtual design point to the initial design point uh, design set and let the composite uh, emulator run? So, but you can see still the composite uh, emulator provides a wider uh, error bounds than the integrated. This is because when you emulate the two models separately, you gain uh, more information about the two. Uh, to uh, physical models. Well, when even you have the identical design point for the composite, it did, didn't know how the information are flowed in this system. So that's the reason why he cannot reduce uh, um, errors there. Uh, so summary, uh, so compared to the composite, the integrated learn the uh, computer system better with the same amount of information because um, because he knows the structures of the system and how the information flow in it, and also produce more uh, robust competency interval because, for the same reason, because we gain more information and uh, get benefits from that. Um, finally, it enables designing with cheaper costs because you basically uh, construct email for each um, physical modules, which provides the uh, flexibilities for you to retrain each model and then you can easily integrate them because of the analytic solution. Okay, that's it. <laughs>